Episode 38. This episode brought to you by ReelsandTackle.com, your family-owned online tackle store. Welcome to the Telltale Fisherman Podcast, where avid anglers share the story of their best fishing day ever to inspire yours. Now it's time for another epic adventure. So here's your host, John Woodson. Okay, welcome to the show. Today's guest is Jackson Kennedy, who's coming to us from Blythe, California. Jackson, how you doing? Doing well. How about yourself? Oh, doing very well and uh, really excited about talking to you today. Before we jump off into the fishing, how about we just uh, have you tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, what you do and uh, what keeps you busy between fishing trips? Sure. Um, you know, uh, I kind of started uh, taking fishing quite seriously uh, a few years ago, mm-hmm. but it's always been something I've been doing ever all my life. Um, I got to thank my grandmother um, who taught my father how to fish and my father who ended up t- teaching me how to fish. It was really a blessing in disguise. Yeah. And um, I've been fishing ever since I was a young kid, you know, going on a little fishing trips with my father um, mostly trout fishing and stuff like that. But at the same time, once we, when we were, I was six months old, we moved to, um, not California, but Blythe, California, I should say. And, um, we have the Colorado river and a lot of canals uh, because of the irrigation town and farming and such. And, um, yeah, we have like, you know, backwaters too, that the canals actually flow into, so the water discharge actually goes back to the Colorado River. Mm-hmm. And it's plenty of great fishing. And, uh, I mean, it's, you know, people take it for granted. And I know I sure did in high school because, I mean, in high school, you know, who, who's really thinking about fishing at that point? You know, I was really <laughs> into sports and, yeah. just, you know, a whole bunch of other things. But it's something now that is a saving grace in my life. And um, I'm blessed to just have it and enjoy it for what it is. And, um, you know, recently here, I'm going to be taking um, college courses again. I've I've already kind of taken them before, but this time I got to take certain classes in order to become a a federal agent for the state of California as a uh, fish and wildlife game warden. Oh, nice. So well, it sounds like with with the new uh, career path you're you're heading down there, you're going to have a great opportunity to uh, help with conservation efforts, and and that's going to be fantastic. Um, so I, I want to just ask you a little bit about all the species. I mean, that you've uh, caught and do catch out there. Pretty much um, here in uh, where I live in Black California, we have uh, a lot of largemouth and a um, I'd say three fourths of amount of largemouth to smallmouth we have ratio, if that makes any sense. Yep. But still, we have both both uh, strains of bass, and um, they're very fun to catch. And some of them do get double digits, and mm. um, those that's those are the ones that I'm kind of after at this moment. Um, I was actually fishing yesterday, and I spent all day on the water, and uh, I'm a little sore still, but you know, <laughs> no pain, no gain, and um, yep. I'm still after you know that big and that that, that big thick girl. So you know, I'm just taking it one day at a time and you know december you know it's you know i I call it december disappointments because (laughs) you know it's 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 cold and some of these fish go dormant and they're they go lethargic and they just don't want to move for nothing and if they do move they want that food served to their face with a with a napkin and a fork in hand but uh you know they don't want anything else and the other species we have around here uh we have an invasive species of uh, striped bass hmm. that was kind of introduced into the Colorado River due to the aqueduct system, which is a uh, series of pipes that is from Lake Havasu, Arizona. But the the striper are just aggressive. I mean, at a young age, they'll go through any little you know hole in the gate or anything, and they'll swim up and down current. Hmm. And what is what is developed here in this town? And, and I've actually watched it and seen it decrease slowly, which is a good thing. 
Um, but what they do is they're very predatorial. I mean, th- we're talking about a fish that originally comes from saltwater and is based kind of on the East Coast. Yep. And um, pretty much here on the West Coast, especially here in Southern California in the desert area next to Arizona, seeing a striped bass maybe in Havasu is, is a whole different story because they're kind of used to seeing it. But here, you know, where I live, it's like, oh, no, because what they do is any fish, and I mean any fish that is maybe their size or a little smaller, they are aggressive and very territorial and don't hesitate to eat them or attack them. Mm. And what it does is it wipes out the thread fin shad we have and the gizzard shad along with the bluegill, yeah. which are pretty much base or uh, you know bait fish, bait species fish that the bass flourish flourish on. Excuse me. Right. And um, pretty much, you know, with that, it's hard for these bass here in this town to really get that get to that double digit weight marker. And that's why we only have a few and a few only. And they're mm. like, you know, catching a, you know, or seeing a unicorn. It doesn't really happen too often. But what it does, it's very special. Right, right. So what what is that big benchmark bass out there for you guys here in Florida? It's kind of the 10 pounder i mean is that about the same size you're looking for there yeah pretty much what i've known of because i have you know buddies and stuff like that who've actually caught some of the 10 pounders that are in this area um I, i'd say the, the, the marker is about 10 pounds 10 pounds yeah. nine ounces wow well now i understand you do a little bit of uh, saltwater fishing as well not not just uh, freshwater fishing for you out there tell us about that well, in Blythe, you know, it's it's primarily freshwater, but where I do go to go saltwater fishing is San Diego, California, um, Mission Bay, and uh, Point Loma and stuff like that. And then um, I, the other places I do visit is uh, Huntington Beach, California, and Newport Beach, California, which I have family in uh, Huntington Beach. And so it's a little bit of uh, a nice little tree and stuff like that ever since I did get into fishing you know, a few years back. And take it seriously, and you know the the whole saltwater thing. You know, I I was always just curious about you know the species of the spotted bay bass and the calico bass, just because I've been catching freshwater bass and I've been loving the fights that they put, and then even the striped bass that fight even harder and just more you know vigorously, and it's just it's really just something else. But um, the saltwater species, I never knew anything about. So, you know, this year especially, I took it upon myself to really look into it and go about it. And what I've done is, you know, I've gone out to Huntington Beach and, um, you know, I caught my first spotted bay bass right there on the, um, I want to say it's the Santa Barbara River. Mm-hmm. And where it flows from mainland, I want it, it's a discharge kind of from like the city and a uh, fresh water source. And it flows right into the ocean. Okay. And there's this jetty, this little rock jetty you want to walk out on there. Right. So right. I was walking out there and I, uh, you know, casted this lure that I was recommended to throw. And I, I was really just like, I, was, I wasn't really thinking I was going to catch anything because the previous day, we had fresh rainfall, and um, which pretty much decreases or increases, or yeah, decreases the salinity in the salt water. Yep. So all the salt water creatures and fish and everything they push their way back out into the ocean until everything levels back out. So I was really just kind of discouraged. I just didn't think that I was really going to hook into anything, and this was going to be like a practice trial run and stuff like that. Well, I make a cast. And I slowly, you know, drag it back in. Next thing I know, thump. And I was like, whoa, I set the hook. And I'm using, you know, a spinning rod at this point. I wasn't using a bait casting rod or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And thump. And I was like, whoa, peeling drag. And I was so impressed by this. The fight of this fish, it was insane. Like, just for it being possibly a two-pounder, one-and-a-half-pound spotted bay bass, it was aggressive and just, just had so much attitude. I was like, whoa, this is crazy. I can only imagine what a five-pound calico feels like. I can only imagine what a three-pound spot of bay bass feels like. And this yeah. guy is only maybe like a pound and a half. And I was just, I was just really impressed. And, uh, you know, he took my lure, went straight down to the rocks, where my feet were kind of, but like off to the distance. 
and try to, you know, bury himself in the kelp and stuff like that. I was like, oh, my gosh. But <laughs> luckily I had the upper hand, the leverage on him and, you know, got him up. And that was something really cool. That was my first saltwater catch experience. When we get back, Jackson is going to share another epic saltwater fishing story with us. So stay tuned. Live bait is often the difference between an epic day and a slow day of fishing. On my last vacation, we were fishing for snook on the beach. The fish were there, but the bait was not. So I ended up driving my boat a mile away to catch bait and then transported them back to the spot on the beach with a five-gallon bucket. However, in the hot Florida sun, that plan did not work out so well. But now, I have found a much better portable option for keeping bait alive on the boat and on shore. Visit tell.fish slash gear to check it out. All right, let's get back to the action with Jackson Kennedy in his next epic saltwater fishing adventure. Recently, um, this summer, my mother never, has never been to Catalina Island, mm -hmm. so me and my brother and you know we kind of coordinated this little trip where me and my family took a trip out to Catalina Island and every day you know my, my mom didn't want to do anything but you know enjoy the place and just kind of do her own thing so I was like all right cool well I'm bringing fishing gear <laughs> yeah, and uh, I, I went fishing every day and I knocked a lot of species off my list and got to see some things that a lot of people wouldn't necessarily see if they're fishing land based from California Mm -hmm. and um, catching tons of calico bass, but nothing too big. I was fishing, you know, on the shore and, bay, shore and you know, the pier and stuff like that. Um, this gentleman walked up to me, and he kind of noticed I was using, a, you know, not the typical fishing tackle that everyone else kind of was using. And because I kind of brought my stuff from home, and, you know, I'm, I'm a bass angler on freshwater at least. And so pretty much he seen my stuff, and he was like, hey, you know, that's, you know, you have a nice rod and nice reel and stuff like that. And, you know, I was like, yeah, you know, you, you know, this is my company, Piscafun, you know, I work with, and they sponsor me and stuff like that. And, you know, then this is, you know, a number eight tackle rod, you know, that's just a sister company of 13 tackle. And, you know, they're great people. They've always been good to me, and they've, you know, make a great product for, you know, not even a, that bad of a price. I mean, it doesn't really put that bad of a dent in your wallet. And we're, the, the conversation carried on and he was like, yeah, I want to go, I wanted, I wanted to go on a boat and go fishing. You know, I'm only here for a couple of days. So I, I just go, you know what, would you be down to go house on a, uh, the cost of a rental boat? And he looked at me astonished. Like, are you serious? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm dead serious. And he was like, yeah, well, let's go. And we said, and we exchanged numbers and he was a gentleman from, from Bulgaria who's a doctor in Costa Mesa, California. Oh, okay. So it was. It was it was really interesting meeting him and, and you know, we exchanged numbers and we set up a date to, you know, go fishing and we knew exactly where we were going to go rent a boat because, you know, family friend owns mm -hmm. the business. Oh, cool. And, um, and pretty much, you know, he gave us a good rate to go out for like, you know, four hours because I would have loved to stay out there for, you know, eight hours. Oh, yeah. Maybe even all day. But, uh he had to come back in because he had to catch the ferry to go back to mainland. Mm, okay. So pretty much we go out there and we're fishing and stuff like that. Um, he's hooking into calico bass. I'm hooking into calico bass and they're not the size that I'm looking for because we're not going too far from Avalon, which is a little Coven Marina and hotspot for tourists and stuff like that, which, you know, gets, you know, that's a whole different other story, but, uh, pretty much like that area and then the outskirts of it it's just you know there's prime fishing all around that island but just where we mm. were at that point in time and maybe it was the time of year or you know something i'm not too sure because i'm still fairly new to ocean fishing mm -hmm. and saltwater fishing but we were catching you know calico bass you know not keeper size nothing over 14 inches or nothing like that and he hooked into a halibut you hooked into a small um, ocean white fish and i was just like you know what? I'm I'm getting tired of watching them catch all these fish right now, and I got, I got to do so I got to do something different. Yeah. So I throw on I throw on this nice fat Lucky Strike uh, rip bait, mm -hmm. which is you know a jerk bait. Yeah. And I tie it on, and I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I know I got maybe a 20 pound fluorocarbon on this reel, but you know what? All or nothing. I, you know, go big or go home. Mm -hmm. I gotta I gotta figure out at least something. So I whip it out there, whip it out there as far as I can. And 
I have, you know, this is the first time me kind of throwing this reel on the rod and stuff like that. And, you know, I kind of had a little bit of a backlash. So I'm pulling it out and all of a sudden I hear something like hit the top of the water. I'm like, whoa. And I was thinking to myself, I was like, wait, my lure's out there sitting kind of on the top. <laughs> no way a fish came up and top water hit it. And you weren't even working it or anything, right? Nothing. Nothing. It was just sitting just out sitting there, there, you know, letting, and, the, and the waves and the current were just kind of like, just, you know, maybe making it rock a little bit. Yeah. I, I mean, it was just sitting there. It wasn't doing much. And so pretty much what happened is, you know, I get that line out of my reel and I click it over and I, you know, a couple turns in and boom, hook. And I was like, whoa, what is this? And just to remind you, I'm using Bass Tackle, a 7-Eleven yeah. rod and a, um, you know, 501 gear ratio reel with 20, with 20 pound fluorocarbon. And this fish was just like giving me a ride. All I was doing was just loading up, leaning back, and this fish was just going where it wanted to. And, you know, when I got my chance to reel in, I reeled in. You know, it wasn't really peeling drag or, you know, but it was just like pretty much having a feisty dog on the other end of the other line. <laughs> and he just wanted to go places real quick before he wanted to come to you. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was really, really fun. And, um, you know, I was like, Oh my gosh. And you know, my buddy's like, Oh my gosh, you got a Benito. And I was like, what is a Benito? Really? He's like, yeah. I was like, well, this is crazy. So, you know, I didn't even know at the point in time, cause I'm so used to bass, freshwater bass fishing, you know, catch and release. Mm -hmm. So I just, threw the Benito back in and he looked at me all weird and I was like he's like you know we could have kept that and I was like what and he was like yeah you know I was like you know people don't really look at them as like good fish but you know it, you can make really good ceviche out of them and you can smoke them and you know you know it's just how you prepare it really and you know it's, it's not that bad and I was like oh man all right well you know what so right back out there and I start ripping it mm -hmm. just pretty much using my whole I like, turning my whole body and then ruin at the same time and just going like very fast, boom, I, I hook up into another one and he's giving me another ride for my life. <laughs> and then we call, and then when, you know, pull him up, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm just like, I'm so ecstatic at this point. So I'm like, oh, wh I found something. I found something that works right now, especially in the last hour of us fishing here. So yeah. uh, pretty much, you know, again, putting it out there, <laughs> bang, another hit. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this one's bigger. So I'm pretty much sitting back on this Benito, and I'm like, okay, 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 where are you taking me? Where are you taking me? And I was just having a good time. Well, my buddy, who was fishing up in the front, because he didn't want to, you know, guide the boat or anything like that, mm -hmm. or drive on the ocean, I, I wasn't afraid at all. You know, it's, yeah. you know, we're just on the ocean. You know, it's like, we're not going to hit anything that massive. And if, if it is that massive, then we'll, we'll be able to see it and, you know, avoid it accordingly. But, you know, he was, he didn't want to drive, so I drove the little boat and everything and stuff like that. And, you know, he's just looking at me and he's like, you know what? I, I need to stop throwing live bait. So he's over there fiddling with his tackle and he throws on something. And at that point, he catches a, a Benito. And I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, nice. Good job. You know, like, you know, you caught one too. But, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm like, yeah, but you've been catching everything else the whole day. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> And so pretty much, um, you know, he, he's like, oh, okay, we're going to keep this one too. So we had two of them in the, um, you know, the, you know, little, you know, live bucket we had. Mm -hmm. And, um, then all of a sudden I cast out there again, whoom, 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 bang, another, another, just a nice solid, just stud, just like just hitting that lure. And, you know, I'm fighting it, you know, kind of like going back and forth with it, watching the rod just kind of like scream like, ah, why are you doing this to me? This isn't a freshwater bass. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's just, it was, it was fun. And then this is where it really gets interesting. In the Pacific Ocean, the record barracuda is nine pounds, three ounces, or nine pounds, eight ounces. I can give or take on the, that nine pound area. Okay. But they don't get as big as they really do like where, you, where you're at in Florida yeah. on the East Coast. And, okay. you know, so running, running into like a nice size, you know, maybe, uh, you know, in this case, a three foot Cuda mm -hmm. is, is something of like a trophy fish. Oh, wow. And, and you know, it, and so it's like, you know, I, I don't, I, you know, I know a lot of people kind of consider Barracuda like not that great, but I know 
like towards the Bahamas and the, you know, the Keys and stuff like that. Some islands, you know, they, they'll eat, they'll eat Benito. It's just how you prepare it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's, yeah, I think that goes with any fish really. Right. And so I go out there thinking that there's nothing but Benito and I'm ripping it, ripping that, ripping that bait. Wow. 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 Boom. And I was like, Whoa, what is this? And all of a sudden, you know, my buddy is like, you know, he's like, whoa, this is this rod that the rod you have and stuff like that, and how you're fighting this fish and how it's like, you know, working you to the left side of the boat all the way to the right side of the mm-hmm. boat in a matter of seconds. He knew it was something bigger and different too. Yeah. So he put down his tackle and stuff like that, and um, he was like, I was like, what is this, dude? I was like, what is this? This is insane, and that started actually pulling my drag a little bit. Oh yeah, they'll do that. And I was like. I was like, oh my gosh. And then all of a sudden we see a nice silver flash. And he's like, you, you're on a CUDA. You're on a CUDA. And I was like, what? So, you know, he's like, all right, all right. And he's kind of like not knowing what to do and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, he goes and grabs his net, which isn't, a, which isn't even a big net. Mm-hmm. I have a bigger fishing net to land my land bass with than he <laughs> brought with us to catch or land these fish with. And, I've never met a person who is more concerned about getting treble hooks caught up in their net than <laughs> landing the fish itself. I was just like, oh my gosh. I was like, you know what? If I catch the fish and the hooks get in the treble, the treble hooks or whatever get in the net, I will take it out. <laughs> I'll pick them out. And not, and not ruin the net. And you can get back to fishing, but let's not lose any fish. And, you know, he didn't want to bring a gaff. You know, my buddy Jay, who owned the boat rental place, was like, hey, you guys want to take a gaff out there with you? And you know, I look at him, I'm like, hey, that'd be a good idea. And he's like, no, nah, we're good. You know, I, I brought a net. You know, I brought everything we need. And I was like, <laughs> all right, well, you know what? You know, I'm not going with a charter boat or anything like that. I'm just going with a guy who kind of knows about saltwater fishing. Mm-hmm. And we ran the boat, and we're just heading out there. So I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm taking his word. So uh, at this point, the CUDA gets close to the boat. And I'm looking at looking down at the water at it, and I'm not even kidding you. I'm about six foot, six foot, six foot one, six foot tall. This cuda was about three feet. Oh wow! From my from the ankle of my foot all the way to my hip. That's like that's give or take three feet. Yeah, that's a nice one. I was like, I was speechless. I was so speechless, and he was freaking out because it was a barracuda that big. Yeah, and he was trying to net it in a net not so big. Right. So pretty much what ends up happening, and oh my gosh, this this makes my stomach turn every time I talk about it. But you know, it's it's fishing and not catching, and I do realize that. Mm-hmm. So pretty much he tries to go and net it. Okay, well this barracuda just is too fast for him. He misses. I don't know what exactly happens, but I'm looking over and I'm I'm trying to grab him by the tail. Yeah, and have him you know, net him by the, the head. Right. What right. ends up happening is he tries to net him on the head through the head and just, and we just get him up. And, you know, like I said, like I'm lucky I got to touch him because what ended up happening is he head shook and hit against the side of the boat, mm. which knocked the lure loose right into the net. And he just took off a beeline. <laughs> and I, and I'm kind of like, I kind of stand back and I'm just kind of like, my jaws dropped and he yep. looked back at me like with the face of like, Oh man, I think I really messed up. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, please don't tell me we lo- you lost that fish. Please tell me you did not lose that fish. <laughs> yeah. I was just so let down. I was like, Oh my gosh. I had to like take a two second break and just kind of just, you know, get my wits back. I'm like, you know what? All right. Lesson learned. Not going fishing with this guy again. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Jackson, man, that was a really cool story, and uh, it's just a lot of a lot of fun talking to you today. I really appreciate you coming on and sharing with us. Thank you. No problem. I really appreciate talking with you today. If you're new to podcasts, there's a simple way to get our latest episodes delivered straight to your mobile device. For iOS, just click on the purple podcast icon. For Android, click on the play music icon. Then search for Telltale Fisherman, hit subscribe, and get ready to enjoy the most epic fishing adventures in the world. This has been the Telltale Fisherman Podcast. Thanks for sharing another great tale with us. Be sure to check out the show notes page for more info on today's show and the gear we talked about. 
keep those lines tight, and we'll catch you next time right here on the Telltale Fisherman Podcast.